Welcome to the Sales Conversion Podcast with Riley Meek, creator of the Social Dynamic Selling System and an expert in replacing cold calls with hot leads. He's created multiple multi-million dollar businesses for himself and has taught countless business owners and salespeople how to close more deals and generate predictable, sustainable revenue. On the podcast, Riley interviews business building gurus, masters of marketing, and other experts who share the secrets you can use to expand your business, grow your income, and improve your life. All right, everybody, welcome to the Sales Conversion Podcast. I'm your host, Riley Meek. And today, man, let me tell you today, I am super excited about our guest, Mr. Augustino Pintis. Now, Augustino is a multifamily investor, syndicator, and entrepreneur with more than 15 years of experience in real estate. He currently oversees strategic partnerships, capital development, and platform development for Realty Dynamics Equity Partners an investment firm specializing in multifamily acquisition and asset management services. Augustino, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, man, I'm pumped up to be here. Yeah, this Super is going to be excited. fun. Yeah, this is going to yeah. be fun. So um, as you know, our, our listeners, we've got, you know, business owners, entrepreneurs, sales reps, sales, you know, sales minded people, marketing minded people. Um, we're going to tr provide tremendous value to them today, but let's give them a little background on, on you. Uh, you know, just, you know, where you came from. I know you re you reside in the, the Cleveland area now, but give them a little background, um, you know, on how you developed or, uh, you know, or actually just got into kind of the real estate world and that, that entire arena. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, you know, it's funny. I, I was one of those 40 hour work week guys, you know, I was doing the corporate thing. I was a technology executive at some big company. And I think like most of your listeners, they're probably in the same boat, right? They're, they're all like doing the 40 hour work week and um, you know, doing, doing the same thing day in, day out. They come home, they're exhausted. They have dinner with their family, maybe, maybe get a chance to put their kid to bed, go to, go to sleep, wake up to repeat it. They're, they're begging for Fridays and dreading Mondays, right? right. That's, that's a lot of what I was doing back then. And, but I think the biggest issue though with all that was giving control of my life to someone else. That was really the biggest thing. And I, I, since I was a kid, I wanted to be an entrepreneur and it didn't have the, the guts to really pull it off until one day the boss walks in and hands me the box. You know what the box is, right? What's, what's the box? The GTFO box. They hand you the box, you pack up your stuff and you're out the door. You're done. <laughs> oh, man. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is, right? So, you know, but that kicked off a whole thing of what am I going to do next? Now, I've been doing real estate, as you mentioned, uh, as a side, little side project type scenario really focusing on single family at the time, but then ended up transitioning to multifamily. And that is where the things really became exciting because now I was able to leverage a great deal of debt, leverage my skills as, as a sales and marketer and, and improve on them really is what it was too. And, and really take advantage of the huge tax uh, the tax uh, breaks you get from doing real estate and, and wealth building. So it's just been uh, a phenomenal whirlwind, man. Um, I, you know, there's not a single day I wake up and, and say, my God, I wish I could go back to that 40 hour job. Oh, <laughs> so, so it'd be so awesome if I could do that. It's never, it's never happened, man. It's never right? happened. <laughs> I, I doubt that ever will, dude. I doubt that. Ever no, will. man, not at all. We didn't even, we, we, even today when we're recording, we had no idea what day it was, right? It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly right. That's awesome, man. So uh, how long, how long ago was that then? You got the, the GTFO box. Yeah. Uh, how long ago was that? So that was probably about four years ago. Okay. And uh, you know, it was funny because at the time, I was still doing the tech thing uh, and you get lazy, right? When that's, I think that's part of the problem is that when you're near a C-level executive, you're earning, you're making bank, you're doing very well. You get living in a nice place. You have a nice car. It's kind of like you get lazy, right? right? You, you don't have to run anymore, so to speak. And, uh, you know, once I got the box, I realized that my, our time here is finite, mine included, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to try to make the best that we can as quickly as we can. That was part of it right there. You know, it was, um, well, there's actually a book by Seneca on the shortness of life. That one, that one is the one that really kicked off the whole journey okay. when I decided to make that decision to do something and, and chose real estate as the thing. But that book really outlines how short our time here actually is. We don't have as much time as we think we do. Right. right. And, 
Uh, I mean, Seneca would, would rather say that we have just enough time to do what it takes to get it done. Uh, however, I think the older you get, the, the, the shorter you realize things actually are. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, it, so, so what's the name of that book again? On the Shortness of, of Life by Seneca. Sure. I mean, you, you, can, you can download it on, uh, you, I mean, you can just do Google searches, PDFs all over the place. I mean, this okay. book's 3,000 years old. It's, it's oh, a man. very old book. Uh, there's, there's audio books available on, on YouTube. You just download it from YouTube, I guess, or just listen to it on YouTube. Um, it's just, it, it's it, words of wisdom are phenomenal, just yeah. phenomenal. So that was one of the game changing things. But, you know, it's, um, for me, I wanted to build a life for my, my son for my family and not have to be stuck doing what I want to do for someone else. Right. right. And, and, but one of the things that, and the reason why you and I met was, was around the whole sales and marketing aspect, getting the mm -hmm. word out around what it is that we do. That's, that's a huge part of it. I, I mean, what's funny, man, is that I did not even consider sales and marketing as a thing. I was so focused on my tech stuff. I was sure. going to running technology. Who cares about sales and marketing? Or oh, it's, oh my God, another sales guy is here to talk to me. Oh boy, <laughs> how terrible, right? And uh, now it's all sales and marketing for us. I mean, yes, of course. Uh, I mean, I buy assets. I mean, I have, I have a deal, two deals cooking right now. Actually, three. Uh, you know, besides the one that's, that's in contract and now we're closing uh, next month. But it's all sales and marketing, man. All right. of it. Everything from talking to talking to the the seller to getting the word out there, doing SEO strategy, doing Facebook ads, all that stuff. And uh, man, I'll tell you, it's like, it's, it's been a transition, an entire transition where now uh, we're, we're focused on, on branding, personal branding, um, all, all that to help build the business. Right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, man, it's just Good. been a, it's been a whirlwind. Yeah. 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 I think, I mean, no matter what business you think you're in, no matter what product or service you think you offer, you are in sales. No, I mean, we're constantly selling. I'm selling my wife every day on why she shouldn't leave me, right? Like that's, it's, it's a learned uh, yeah. skill that, that people need to, you know, you know, not perfect, but they need to, you know, hone their skills um, on, you know, sales and marketing, no matter what product or service they think they actually have or business that they're actually in. So that's good, man. So you started out with, with single family, yeah. Right. And yep, then you yep. kind of transitioned into multifamily. Take me through that process. What was that? Uh, what was your mindset kind of going through that? Well, I, thought, I mean, it's, man, it's, it's, it's funny, you know, you, there's a quote by, uh, by Seneca actually, uh, when uh, you have, people have two lives. The first life is when you're, the first time you're, you're, is when you're born. The second time is when you realize you don't have much left, right? And <laughs> I think it was, I was still in the first phase of my life where I was doing the 40 hour work week thing. And the whole reason why I did the single family home thing was because I was scared, man. I was scared to death. That's the reason. Sure. F scared. Why was I scared? Because even though I was making six figures, I was, I was a C-level executive and I, was, I had all this fancy stuff. And the, everyone apparently liked me at the time. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, I, I was worried about my job, man. I was always worried that I was going to get canned. Sure. Always. Always. That was the primary thing. It's like, they all like me today, but tomorrow they won't. And so I better hurry up and do something about it. And I didn't know that multifamily was even a thing. It was even an option. It was all single family for me. Okay. And then when it did finally happen, it took me years to recover from it. That's a whole other story. But when I did and discovered how to raise capital, how to raise money from other people and syndicate deals, right? So basically putting deals together talking to investors, getting investors to believe in me and believe in the property and the project and invest with me and become partners with me on a deal. That's when the tipping point really hit. Once I heard how this could be done, it was probably about four years ago at this point. I was like, I went all in, man. Yeah. I went all in. I just I took a short term consulting gig just to get off the ground. And uh, I, I, on the last day, I swear to God, man, on the last day that I was working in corporate, I was handing out high fives on the way out the door. I swear. <laughs> I swear. My friends still, I saw friends there and they say, I can't believe you did that. Yes, it's true. I was, did that. It was hilarious. <laughs> uh, but great, yeah, man, I mean, it's, but syndication, putting deals together, getting out there, talking to people about, about why you're excited about doing it. It's just phenomenal, man. It yeah. really is. It really is. And, and I've been doing it ever since. And I've been trying to do bigger, bigger and better deals that not only produce 
income for myself and my family, but also build wealth for, for my investors and they're happy. I'm happy. It's, you know, the, the people that live there, they're happy They have a place to live. It's, it's a win, win, win. It's, it's, it's the only thing on the planet that I have found that actually works. It's the only right. thing I can't find anything else. Right. Yeah. yeah I want to, so I want to dive into that, but I want to make sure people like, you know, really understand that, that climbing that, that ladder, that you know, the C level job that you had, you're like at the, the peak of it, right? Yeah. Thinking that you have a, I mean, obviously you didn't, but I think so many people don't step out of their comfort zone and go into sales or entrepreneurship or start their own, you know, side hustle because they, they think that they're in a stable job. Like it's safe here with this job, which in all reality, if you have, if, if at any point they can fire you, like that is the most unstable situation you could ever be in. And really why, you know, personally, you know, I chose entrepreneurship because I didn't want somebody to be able to put that, that, uh, you know, value on me of what I'm worth, you know, from an, you know, an income standpoint, but even from a, a time standpoint, that 40 hours a week, 80 hours a week, whatever it is that you're working. So yeah. if you want to be in true control of your life, you know, starting your own business, your own hustle, we'll call it, is really the only way, in my opinion, that that can actually happen. Yeah. So would you, would you agree, man? hundred, hundred percent, man. Yeah. percent. I mean, and I'll, and I'll tell you one other thing too, is that when, when I was doing the four, the, the 40 hour thing, actually, I wish it was only 40 hours. It's more like 60 to 65 sure. hours, you know, not only myself, my, my team, I was pushing my team hard, man. I mean, they were a great team. They were, I mean, I did not have any slouches on my team and they worked hard. The, I, I mean, I concentrated on my work. I would go into my Wednesday morning meetings. I would show the, the great tech that we're developing. It's like, I'm talking leading edge stuff. Back then, I didn't come from that industry. So back then I was applying stuff from outside of the industry to this new industry that I had no familiarity with. And they're like, holy crap, where'd you get that idea from? Well, I got it from manufacturing or I got this from, from the debt collection world or I got this sure. from other, you know, so it was entirely different. And I just kept my head, my head down, talked to my team and developed. That's it. We wrote code. We built hardware. We, we built in redundancy. That, that still wasn't good enough. I didn't sell like you talked about before, about selling yourself to your wife. I know you did it in jest, but it's true, right? right. You have to sell yourself to your, your team, your, your tribe. I didn't sell myself to the tribe. And that's why I got the box. There's clowns that are still working there today that never really contributed much. They're still living. They're still working there. I mean, good for them. I don't care. I'm not, I'm hating or anything. It's fine right. with me, man. I, I, I have no regrets right. <laughs> at all, <laughs> but, but it's like, you know, it's sometimes you, uh, you need a good kick in the ass to, to really get moving. And that's what it was. You know? Yeah, man. It was. Absolutely. So these deals you, you put together now, is this kind of like, um, cause a, a lot of people follow Grant Cardone. Sure. You know, he's got Cardone Capital, yeah. where he's buying these huge multi, you know, complexes and people are investing in. Is it is along those lines? Yes. Yeah. Similar, similar to that. He's, he's, he syndicates his deals. Uh, he does his a little differently where he's actually buying the asset first, then syndicating it afterwards, so to speak, okay. where we're syndicating it on the way in. That's, that's okay. really the only difference is between that and of course, the assets he's targeting are like A-class assets, usually fairly new. Uh, right. Sometimes it does the value add thing. We always do the value add thing. That's a matter of course, but our, our asset class is more like a C or a B, which is A is like the brand new stuff or somewhat new, like five years old or maybe, maybe young, you know, newer than that. The B is going to be five to maybe 10 or 15 years. And then your C is going to be older than that. Then you have your D's, which is going to be like war zone. You stay away from that stuff. Nobody should be doing that. Well, somebody right. needs to be doing it, but not me. That's <laughs> right. someone else will do it. I'm not, <laughs> not, I'm not good at that. I will stay away from it. Right. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's, we play in the B and C realm. We know that realm very, very well. We focus on one area and uh, yeah, we just, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. We have a great team that knows how to run it. You know, that, yeah. that's, that's really what it is. Yeah. I think that's the most important and why, why these type of deals intrigue me is that, you know, obviously the, the market has taken a huge hit, you know, over the last couple months, uh, which I think it will come back, but like, what, where are you seeing, uh, you know, and I'm not an expert in real estate. And, and yeah. what I was saying is like, why I like these is that I can, I can put my money somewhere with people that I trust that I know are going to be running, you know, running the, the program or, you know, the deal essentially. Um, but where are you guys seeing like the market right now, real estate? Is it a good time to, to buy, you know, Riley, these type of multi-family complexes? Riley, I'll tell you what. Okay. So if 
let's go back to 2008 for a second. I, and I yeah. can't show you a graph right now, but you can easily Google this, okay? Uh, if, you, if you do a search for multifamily performance uh, 2008, you'll see a graph that was put up by the Fed, okay? And this graph shows the default rates of multifamily versus single family in, in that, that, that last big recession from 2000 in 2008, uh, which really went to about mid-2009, according to this graph. And I'll tell you, man, where multifamilies were all over the place, uh, you know, default rates were across the nation, multifamily only def had a 0.5% default rate, 0.5, half a percent default. Wow. And that's, and that's probably because many of these people, they'll buy an appreciation versus, in, versus cash flow. That's, that's one of the reasons why. So people like to get speculative about buying an asset. Uh, well, I think it's going to be worth more in the future because, uh, because I say so or whatever. Right. They don't do right. their analysis properly. That's, that's, I bet a lot of it was that. And uh, th every market has, has some of that that goes on. That's, that's one thing. That's reason, reason number one, right? So that's, that's a thing it's a very stable asset. No matter what happens, people need a place to live. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but you take fast forward to, to today. Well, what about what's going on today then? You know, we have right. all this, this, this coronavirus stuff going on. What, what about that? Well, I'll tell you, a, the, same, the same thing has happened as a guy that, that currently owns stuff. My friends own this stuff too. Our collections are still okay. We're still collecting greater than 92% of the money is still coming in. Right. right. We have had to work with some residents as far as uh, working around their, you know, the, any job less they may have or anything else like that, but we're still paying the bills. Everything is still going the way it needs to go. Uh, much like what Grant did. Do we hold back uh, some of the money for the, some of the returns for the short term? Yes. That's, sure. it's very prudent to do that. There's nothing right. wrong with that at all. It's, 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 it's our job as asset managers to do that. And any syndicator listening here will probably tell you the same sort of thing. Right. <laughs> right. It's, it's our job. It's our job to, to, to protect the asset. Yep. And uh, so anyway, as, as it sits right now, according to uh, CU today, credit union today, they put out a report that said that the same thing, default rate is going to be less than 0.5% <laughs> wow. for, from all this, from, yeah. from all this fallout. Now, of course, if this if, if this coronavirus uh, you know mandate lockdown were to go on for six seven months, we'd be in this whole nation would be in trouble, right? right? But I think nowadays uh, the states are opening up. Uh, maybe by the time this recording hits, uh, all the states will will be opened up. Uh, so or at least the majority of them anyway, and right. things are going to start getting back to normal here. But you know it's it's no, no matter what Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you cannot beat it in terms of people need a place to live it's on the lowest level of maslow's hierarchy of needs if you don't know what that is go ahead and look that up it's uh it's you know, it's, it's very important to defining the human condition and no matter what people need a place to live yeah absolutely absolutely you know you made reference to um you know i remember seeing all these on social media uh when grant was holding back those yeah. payments to his, yeah. his investors and I thought I had the same thought. I'm like, well, that's what you pay him for is to run that stuff that, you know, so you can't give him flack for like holding it back. If he's, you know, seeing the writing on the wall, his job is to protect the asset. So um, I'm glad that you agreed with that. So oh yeah. 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 You have me. to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and usually it's, it's either the haters that, uh, that say, look, see, he's looking at him. He's failing. Right. Or you get, or, or you get people that are just trying to take advantage of the, of the, uh, you know, I guess this is the social media buzz, if you will, you know, that kind right. of thing, jumping on the bandwagon. I have my own personal feelings about it. And, you know, if you could see my face, if this, if this is on video, you can see uh, what I think about that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, you know, it's never good. It, it never turns out good to, to show hate to anybody. Right. It's not good for your soul. It really isn't. It's not right. good for you. It's never good Yeah, for man, you. absolutely. Yeah. So what is it... Um, what is it that you guys are doing right now? So you, you seek out properties and then you seek out investors, yeah. right? Uh, like, is it like 50, 50 right now? Or as far as your, your marketing efforts towards one or the other, or how do you go about that? Huh, you know, it's funny. I never really th thought of it as, as a percentage wise, but, <laughs> but, I'll tell you, <laughs> but I'll tell you, man, I mean, marketing effort 
is probably more like 90%, 90, 94%, 95%. I mean, we spend the bulk of our time marketing and the okay. deals come after, right? So of course I have a network of, of brokers out there that will send over deals, right? They'll just say, hey, here's a deal, you know? And, and most of the time they just, they just show up. I mean, it isn't like I'm actively, I mean, I'll, I'll call on brokers once in a while, but the deals just come to me. You know, yeah. they, they know that I'm always looking, they know that I'm always looking for deals or if I'm selling a deal, I'll say, Hey man, do you have anything or what? And, you know, that kind of thing. Right. And I'll, I'll say this, that the bulk of what we do is through our, our show. We do, we do webinars. We do, um, we also do live events, mm -hmm. uh, you know, similar to what you do with, 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 we haven't tried your thing yet, but maybe we can talk about that at some point. Yeah, man where uh, we're, we're, we're having dinners to really entice some of those, those investors. But really what happens is, is that you're always, always getting your name out there. That's what Grant Cardone, that's why he does five days a week, right? He does right. a show five days a week. There's a reason why he does that. There's a reason why he does all the social media stuff. When he says that social media is a gift from God, he is not kidding. I mean, I'm hiring four people this week just to handle all that stuff. You know, yeah. it's, it's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. And he is all over the place and he, and he owns it too. I was at, you know, 10 X growth con this last year. And he's like, you guys got like 700 emails from me this last year. You know, it's just like a crazy number. Like I get two, three, four a day from him to the point where it's kind of annoying, <laughs> but he's like always out there and he's like, you're going to know who I am, whether you, you know, like it or not. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's the thing though, too. He's got so much content right. as well. The content is important. He's got something to sell everyone. And, um, yeah, man, that's, 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 and that's part of it too, is that he's, it isn't like he's just selling for the sake of selling. He's trying to deliver value and that's what we ought to be doing too. I mean, we, Most definitely. I'm delivering value to my investors. I'm trying to get them into deals as well to help protect their, their money, protect their wealth, help them build some legacy while helping, while helping tenants and helping myself. It's a win, win, win. Like I said before, you know, it's, yeah. it's not a one way situation. And uh, yeah, man, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those things that you have to be doing all the time. And, and that's, and that's probably one of the biggest thing, Riley, is that it takes work. You right. know, it takes a lot of work to put this together. A lot of work. Even if you have a team of people working for you, you have to direct that team because they won't do anything. Otherwise, they'll just sit, right. sit there and do nothing. Right. They'll gladly take your paycheck, right? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to be steering the ship there. So do you guys do, um, I know you're in the, the, Cleveland or Akron area, right? Yeah. Yeah. Are, are most of your properties in, in and around that area or have you guys, are you nationwide or where do you look for these, these type of deals? Yeah. So all the deals that we do are in this area. So uh -huh. in Cleveland, Akron at this point, uh, primary secondary market. Uh, so, and that's the thing. So our strategy is to stay focused on one area and just do everything in that one area. What, what, what people don't realize is that it takes a high degree of effort to build the team, to build your team of contractors, your property managers, your attorneys, your, uh, your title companies, all these different things that have to get done. And it's, it's, it's tough to manage if you're doing, uh, you know, 100 units in South, South Carolina and another right. 400 units in Dallas, Texas, and whatever the case may be, like if, if it's all spread out, it's very hard to get the, the economies of scale that you really need. That's why we focus on one area. Uh, we'll probably add, uh, well, we got another deal on the, on the hook right now here, about 300 units. Uh, we'll probably add another, I don't know, a thousand units maybe. And then we'll probably pick the next market, probably somewhere South where it's warmer. Cause, uh, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the winter, you know, <laughs> so, so we'll probably go somewhere South and, and do the same thing there, build, the, build the whole thing all over again. It's like, yeah. that's, that's how it gets done. Uh, that's just how I do it. Uh, other people do it different, different ways, but I also understand that it took years to develop the team that we now right. have and our, our team is, is, we have a solid team man. we have a solid team that, that team is everything. Buying the deal is easy. You know, really is sure. buying it is super easy. Getting the financing, all that stuff is easy compared to running it for 10 years profitably. That's hard, man. Right. That's hard. That's a lot of work, man. Right. And uh, so you better be right and you better keep an eye on it. Yeah. You know, have you guys ended up selling any properties yet? Yeah. 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 We actually sold, uh, well, we have one under contract now, two under contract. I'm waiting for the, the, the other one right now. And then the third one will be going up here soon. So yeah, cool. man. 
then we're doing two refis end of this month. Uh, we're going to be on, on one of the refires. We're doubling the money, man. Double beautiful. the money. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. It's a beautiful deal. Yeah. 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 They're That's great. So it. explain to our, so some of our listeners might not really understand how this works. Like if they, yeah. if they've got 50 grand sitting aside, a hundred yeah. grand sitting aside and they don't yeah. want it sitting in the, you know, the volatile stock market, they could take this money essentially and invest with you into these properties. And then do you, do you guys do like monthly, quarterly, annually, like dividends or how does that work? Yeah. So, so it's a quarterly dividend. So basically here's how it works, right? It, it, it's almost like you're buying a stock, but you're buying it in a building. So you're buying, you get equity in a, in a building is what you do. Right. Mm -hmm. And a real asset. That's the key here, man. It's right. a real asset. I can, you can, I can jump, jump in a car with me. I'll take it to the property, point at it and say, that's our property. They're, 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 they're property owners, just like I am. Right. The exception is that they don't have the risk that I do. Like I'm signing for the loan. I'm running the deal. I'm, I'm taking care of all, of all the, the GP, the general partnership aspects. They're limited in the sense that they don't, they don't have all the risk of the deal, right? So right. they get all the upside with none of the downside. I take on, I take on the downside. That's part of my, that's, that's what I'm putting into the game here, right? Yep. In terms of skin of the game. And basically they, they, they put in, they put in, you know, say it is 50 or a hundred thousand dollars. Right. And let's say it depends on what the raise is. So that one deal I was just talking about, let's use that as an example. We had to raise uh, about a million dollars. Right. So we got 10 people to put in a hundred K each. Okay. Right? And so if they put in a hundred K they when we go to refi, what we're doing right now, we're, we plan on giving them all their money back plus a bump and they get the quarterly distributions along yeah. with it. You know, so it's gonna, we're going to double their money in like four years. It's wow. phenomenal, man. It's phenomenal. Wow. Yeah, it's great. It's a great deal. And not to mention too, if the person uses a self-directed IRA, so if let's say for instance, they have a hundred grand sitting in their IRA and they're, they're, they're biting their nails because the freaking stock market's turned to crap, right? right. Like, what am I going to do with this? You put in a self-directed IRA, you take all that money and direct it right into a deal. You push it all into a deal. All those, all that gains, all those gains you get, go back into the IRA tax-free, man. You defer the, you defer taxes till later in life. It's yeah. freaking beautiful, man. People don't that even is, know you can do that. They right. had no idea. I had no idea I could self-direct IRA. I, I, I thought I, like when, I, when someone told me about it, I thought I, I like discovered the moon or something. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, it's a thing. It's but that's that's the thing in corporate America. I never learned about they that. They don't teach you that, right? They don't teach you that. No, no, they don't teach you anything like that. They want to keep your money trapped in a 401k. Right. You know, that's the thing. They want to do that. You can, if whoever's listening right now, if you don't think about this, just Google self-directed IRA and you'll see what it's all about. Man, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy yeah. the things you can do. It's not a scam. It's totally real. It's legit. There's people doing it. <laughs> yep. Absolutely, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like even you want to set up a self-directed IRA and then push it towards you versus just giving you cash yeah. right from a tax saving standpoint. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I mean, and listen, you don't have to invest with, with me or you don't have to invest in real estate either. There's right. all kinds of other things you can self-direct your money into as long as it's not like artwork or, you know, wine collections or stuff like that. There's certain things you can't do. Right. Right. But for like investing in businesses and stuff like that, absolutely. You can do that too, man. It's, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. Yeah. People have no idea they can do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. As much as we love our government, we want to keep as much money as we can, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's great, dude. Awesome. So, yeah, dude, keep me in the loop on, on some of these properties coming up because this is something I, I've got a couple other buddies that do this as well. Um, and then, you know, I've been following Grant and seeing what he does. So I love, uh, you know, I love, you know, being in the loop on, on different deals and opportunities. So for sure, keep me in the loop. So absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 This has been good, man. So, um, I always like to end on a couple kind of random questions. Sure. So, well, let's, let's, let's see, uh, if you have any, you know, any routines, I guess in the morning, you got, okay. do you have a morning routine? Take, take me through like your morning ritual. Sure. 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 You going for the day. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, b before the, all this Corona stuff hit and I'm getting back into it now, is I'd wake up at 5 a.m. I would uh, go to the gym, right? So CrossFit. And after that, come home, get the coffee, get, get, get a, a mug of espresso roll in, sit down and write out my, my affirmations. And my affirmations are what I want my life to be, what I want my life to look, to look like. 
right? Yeah. And I write it as if it's already happened or it's happening. Yeah. I don't write it like it's in the future. I'm writing it like it's today. Your subconscious does not didn't have a concept of time. It does not know, right? So if you say, I have 12,000 units producing 12% annually, I have my cyber truck sitting outside waiting for me right now to go for a ride. Right. My, my son is friends with the most powerful people on the planet. You know, all these different things, right? You're writing as if it's happening today. And, and I do that every day. And I sit down and whatever comes to my mind that day, I write down. Sometimes it changes, right? Sometimes it changes, sometimes it doesn't. But that's, that's basically what I do. And then I flip the page and, and I journal just a little bit, just a couple of paragraphs. What's going on? What's on my mind? You know, if nothing's on my mind, I write about, hey, there's nothing on my mind right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, whatever it might be. It's the exercise of sitting down and taking some time with, for yourself before you really start the day. And then um, it's at that point that I go through the, the calendar. I usually uh, get everything ready on Sunday I, for, to practice or for the, for the whole week. But I like to look at the calendar then and say, okay, here's what I need to do today. Here's some of the major items that need to get handled plan it all out and then start attacking the day with my mug of espresso to charge me up. It usually gets me to about noon before I have another one. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome, man. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Those affirmations are powerful. Yeah, absolutely. Those, those changed my life. You know, the affirmations, it's like when I first heard it, I thought it was all a bunch of foo-foo nonsense, stupid, you know, vision board. That sounds dumb. That sounds like a bunch (laughs) of nonsense. No, whoever's listening to this thing, I'm telling you right now, if that's the fence you're on, the side of the fence you're on, I promise you, as a guy that was a skeptic, and I'm pretty skeptical, that stuff works, man. You it need does. to do it. You need to do it. Yeah. Absolutely does. It's powerful stuff, man. All right, cool. Last one then. Um, having come from you know corporate America, transitioning into you know business owner, entrepreneur, what are let's let's go with three. What are like three skill sets that you would give advice on that that people should you know if they're whether they're just starting out now or they've been in business for a period of time, three sp- most important skill sets that they could develop to help further them within their career. Sure, sure, sure. Well, first is, is uh, sales and marketing. Uh, you know, I, like I said, I totally underestimated the sales and marketing aspect. And that is b- the ability to write compelling copy to, or at a minimum, identify compelling copy, have, have someone else help you with it, you know, hire it out if you had to, then bring them in and, and uh, have the understanding of what makes something compelling, the psychology behind it even. I mean, that's, that's a lot of work right there. And then the marketing side, uh, nowadays you have to be concerned with SEO marketing. You have to be concerned with some of the, the digital means of, of getting the word out there, uh, not to mention the, what, what you do in, you know, in IRL in real life. You know, there's all that aspect as well, but I totally underestimated that that aspect of, uh, in all my businesses I did, all of them, sure. all of them. Not just before the real estate thing, I did other businesses as well. I totally, I, I, you know, I, I messed all that up. I messed it up. I, I just underestimated the ability uh, to really sales and market and really be, make it a focus. I, it was just there off to the side. There's plenty of people out there that just, eh, I'll, sell, I'll go and sell them. No, there's a process. There's right. a method that has to be followed. Uh, number That's two, good. yeah, but number two, it was public speaking. I, I, I took it upon myself to learn the art of public speaking. And really, it's, it's really just getting in front of stages, trying to overcome some of the fear that you get. Everyone has it, you know, but I took, I took, the, um, I took improv for a while just to learn how to, how to get overcome that as well, like be able to think on your feet really quick, that kind of thing. I studied all that as well. I mean, I, I went all in on, on really becoming uh, really good at, at getting in front of stages and not yeah. being afraid, right? And I think the third, which is probably the most important, is perseverance. It's, it's, unfortunately, it's a skill that is very, very difficult to learn, more difficult than the other two, because it, it requires you to really not give up and not give in when, when things get really, really tough and things always get tough. They always do. Yeah. And that's probably one of the biggest aspects is that if you're unable to overcome something, it, you, you're just going to stay in one place and no matter what, you can't stay in that place. You, know, you got to move on. You got to keep moving forward no matter what. And uh, that's, uh, that's probably the biggest thing. And I, and I, what I do is on the way to the gym, 
I actually listen to Tom Bilyeu. I listen to impact quotes on the way there and on the way back yeah. on the way to the gym. You know, nothing gets you charged up and motivated. But one thing you have to realize is that in the morning when you first wake up, that is when you have the most amount of glycogen in your brain. And that is when your brain is most open to, to new ideas and concepts. So if you start your day at a point when your brain is most open and you inject these positive perseverance related information, it's that kind of stuff that'll carry you not only through the whole day, but through your whole life. But you have to start it off. Every single day has to be started off like that. That's great. Every single day. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. So perseverance, be the hardest worker in the room. That's, that's, it is the hardest thing to do, but it's, it, I mean, it's literally, it's free to do that, right? Like it doesn't take yeah. money. It just takes your, your actual energy and effort. Yeah. It takes mindset. Other, it takes mindset. Exactly right. Yeah. Yep. So perseverance, fantastic. The, you know, being the hardest worker in the room is going to get you further than anybody else always, but you can also work smarter by learning sales and marketing, learning public speaking, which your other two skill sets. So that, that's fantastic. Those, those sales and marketing, public speaking, dude, that's my, you're, you're, that's music to my ears with what yeah. I do. So <laughs> I love it. You know, you know, your audience. So <laughs> uh, this is good. Well, this has been fun, August, you know, man, I appreciate it, dude. Your wealth of knowledge. And um, if any of our, you know, y y all your properties are in the Ohio area right now, but certainly yeah. your investors aren't right. They can, no, 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 they're all over the place. Yeah. They're all over the world. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So if any of our listeners wanted to hit you up and, and learn more about what you do, uh, you know, any potential deals, uh, you know, coming up or at least be on the list for potential deals, how would they find you, man? Sure. Uh, bulletproofcashflow.com is, is the way to do it. So we have Realty Dynamics, which is the, the real estate side of the business. And that's really the holding company for the various assets that we have. But Bulletproof Cashflow, that is the, the platform that we use to help get our message out there. So we have a YouTube channel. We have, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn. We're you have on, a podcast, right? We have a podcast. We've got all that stuff. Yeah, we've got everything. We try to give out as much information as we can, good quality information to everyone. So they can, they can learn how to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We'll put all those links in the show notes as well, but do you guys a favor, do yourselves a favor and, uh, you know, subscribe to his podcast and uh, get on his list and he'll keep you in the loop. So Augustino, yeah. my man, this has been fun. Appreciate you being on. Hey man. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.